Welcome to the Pear Red Sand Plan Tools and Channel. Our goal is to help you find your point of entrance by showcasing the top attraction in the San Francisco Bay Area. Today's focus will be phase three of a series of adventures featuring the wonderful neighborhood of Betrayal Hill in San Francisco. Now, Betrayal Hill has many hidden gems that tourists and even locals alike aren't even aware of. For example, most tourists and locals know of the Crooked Street, the Lombard Crooked Street, as the longest Crooked Street in the city. However, the longest Crooked Street in the city is a Betrayal Hill at the corner of 20th and Vermont. Now, we featured the Patrol Hill Crooked Street in Phase 1 of our film shoot of Patrol Hill. I'll put a link in the description below. We also continue the journey of special hidden gems in Phase 2 as well. Now, we're going to continue Phase 3 by emphasizing more hidden gems within Patrol Hill, beginning at the corner intersection of San Bruno Avenue and 18th Street going eastbound on 18th Street. That being the case, let's get started. Today's weather in San Francisco is 63 degrees Fahrenheit with 68% humidity, 9 mile an hour winds. Today's date is Tuesday, October the 30th, 2020. Time is 2 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Now here's one of the many bridges that you'll find throughout the city that will essentially connect you from one, either one block to the other, or in this case, over the 280 highway from where we're at in Patrol Hill over to the Mission District. I believe this is gonna connect to Patrol Avenue. Uh, but nevertheless, like, the step, many step wells that we have throughout the city, you'll also find many bridges as well. So let's take you over the bridge. Now this bridge is at the corner of San Bruno Avenue and 18th Street. Now, as I mentioned earlier, this bridge is built going over the two, the 101 Highway. Now, 101 Highway is a popular highway that is frequent in the traffic. And looking at this direction from which the camera is facing, this is looking southbound. So if you were coming from the city, say, going to the San Francisco airport, you'd be going southbound. Whereas on to, your, to your right, that is, of the highway, to your left, the cars are going northbound coming into the city. Now, I mentioned before my previous uh, phases with the career of Cheryl Hill that the main highway you want to use and coming into and out of the city is on Highway 280 and not 101. We'll feature 280 later on throughout the film shoot. Now on the opposite end of the bridge you'll see now we're facing northbound. You see the skyline, the San Francisco buildings, uh, skyscrapers that are in the downtown area. Now look to your right you'll see the cars uh, going inbound towards the downtown area, whereas to your left, they're going out of bound, away from the city. Now, once you cross this bridge, you're going to be in the neighborhood of the Mission District, which we'll feature at a later film shoot. But this is designed to let you know that when you cross over, as I said earlier, when you cross over bridges or use bridges to cross over either streets or highways sometimes it will connect you to another neighborhood or just another block so now let's return back over the bridge as we continue our journey within Patrol Hill now here's one of several many gardens that are throughout the city but several of which are within Patrol Hill and those of you into gardens will really enjoy the uh, very fine gardens that are within the city. This one is called the Benches Garden. So let's take a quick look. So you can see there is a walk path that will allow you to explore more of the garden. 
some of the unique plants that are within the garden. Now, one of the things that makes this garden special, like the one that's adjacent to the Crooked Street at 20th and Vermont, is that while you're in the garden, you'll be able to observe spectacular views of either the city skyline, which you can see right now, or which is northbound, or to your west, you'll be able to see Sutro Tower. A few more views of the wonderful plants within the garden. Now this garden is located right at the corner of San Bruno Avenue and 18th Street, just outside of the entrance to the bridge. Now here's a nice little seating area that's just in front of the bridge where you can relax, maybe network, take a quick break, have lunch. And instead, right across the bridge, the path to the bridge is of course where the garden is. Now, one of the things you need to be aware of when parking throughout the city is the signage that indicates how and where you and when you should park. Now, in this case, you must park at 90 degrees angle. I'll show you what, what, that, what that angle looks like for many of the cars that are parked here, but this is a very important that you abide by the parking rules and the signage on the street. Uh, the other thing is right underneath it, under red and white marking, is, is the sign indicating no parking between 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. on Mondays due to street cleaning. That means that during this time frame, if your car is parked on the, on the side of the street where the sign indicates where there's no parking allowed, during that time frame, you're gonna get towed so again, make certain that you pay attention to the signage that are on the streets if you decide to street park. So this is what the sign means by parking at 90 degrees. You see how the cars are all aligned at 90 degree angle? And this is how you need to be parking your car on this particular block within the street, which is uh, San Bruno Avenue. Now, one of the things that's nice and convenient about the the signage uh, that identifies the street and within the city is most uh, street identification signs are usually at the corner of the block that are adjacent to poles, that are attached to poles. But in some cases, there's no sign on the pole indicating or identifying the title of that street. So in that case, especially if you're walking or running or cycling, when you get to the corner of the block, you look down on the sidewalk and you'll see the name and title of the street. Now, in this case, it's 18th Street. As I mentioned earlier, we're beginning at the corner of 18th and San Bruno. So let me show you the uh, sidewalk that indicates San Bruno Avenue. So here's the sidewalk that shows San Bruno Avenue. So again, this is how you will be able to identify any street that you are on when the street title, the, name, the title of the street is not identified on a uh, pole that's at the corner of the block. So here's an example of how you can initially identify the title of a street by when you sit it early, when you get to the street corner, you'll see that the streets are attached to a pole. Now in this case, again, we're still at the corner of 18th Street, the cross street is San Bruno. Now we're going to continue our journey of exploring Patrol Hill on 18th Street going eastbound. Now the other thing you need to be aware of is the numbered block and how the streets are aligned. This will help you determine uh, how to find a specific location uh, within a street. Now if you see here, we're located at the 20 of the block of 2300. And let me give you a closer shot of how it looks like. So you see we're at the corner of 2300 18th Street. Now, the arrow, look at the arrow, is pointing to your left, which means that the number block is getting larger, which means that the next block is going to be the 2400 block, the next one is going to be 2500, et cetera, et cetera. But we're going, that's going westbound. Uh, now, however, we're going to be going eastbound, which means that the number block is going to be smaller. That means that it's going to be then uh, the next block going to your eastbound is going to be 2200, it's going to be 2100, then 2000, 1900, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, again, this is one way how you can determine the lo specific location of where you might be 
where you might be going, but also in the event that you know, let's say you're looking for a Uber service or a sidecar service like Uber or Lyft, and the driver asks you your specific location. If you don't know offhand, one of the things you can do is you can turn to the street, the numbered block that helps you identify what street you might be on. And one thing you're going to notice, I'm going to show you in a minute, is that on one side of the street is odd numbered, the other side is even numbered. Again, making it easy for you to determine where specifically are you located. So with that being the case, let's continue going eastbound on 18th Street. So here's a classic example. You see in this address it shows 2245 18th Street. But you notice that the number is odd numbers, which means that the opposite side of the street is going to be even numbered. So again, if you are trying to uh, identify your specific location, let's say if you're, again, as I said earlier, looking for um, a sidecar service like Uber or Lyft and the driver asks you, where is your specific location? All you got to do is turn to the uh, street address of where you might be nearby. And in this case, we're at 2245 18th Street. And now you know your exact location. And you also know that the since this side of the street is odd number, ending at 45, then you know that the opposite side of the street is going to be even number, which is mean it might be 2244 or 2246, etc., etc. So let's continue our journey going eastbound on 18th Street. Okay, so now we're at the corner of Vermont and 18th Street, and we're at the 2200, where we're going to be approaching uh, the, the 2100 block going eastbound, but the other thing is special about Vermont Street, as I mentioned uh, earlier in the introduction, is that if you go up two blocks up Vermont to 20th Street, that's where we're going to find the longest crooked street. Again, the link is going to be in the description below. And you definitely don't want to miss that historical monument. Uh, the other thing is special is when you get to each specific uh, intersection, within the city, especially if you're in a hill like Petrillo Hill, is that you're going to be able to observe spectacular views of the uh, East Bay, or I should say looking eastbound, northbound, westbound, and southbound. And it's going to vary from intersection to intersection, but let me give you an example of what you might see per intersection. Now looking towards the west, from which we came at San Bruno and 18th Street, you're going to see Sutro Tower, a spectacular view as well as spectacular view of the the city skyline in terms of the city housing skyline, which is really amazing. I featured Sutro Tower in my film shoot on Twin Peaks, so I'll put a link in the description below. Now, looking towards the north at the same intersection, you're going to see spectacular views of the downtown city skyline. And you can see there in the distance that tall brown building, that's the Bank of America building. Just to the right, you see that pointed building, that's the Pyramid building. And you see a few other skyscraper buildings. So let me show you another uh, great photo shot at the same intersection. Now looking towards the south, at the same intersection, you're going to see the direction leading up to the longest Fuka Street, which is 20th and Vermont. Now, continue our journey going eastbound on 18th Street at the 2100 block of 18th Street. So as you can see here, this address shows the even, on, if you look at the other side of the street of 18th Street, this shows the even side of the streets of the addresses, which is at 2136 18th Street. So you can see um, this is going to make it easier for you to find an establishment by as well as being able to identify your location um, if somebody needs to find you as well by knowing the odd versus the even number side of streets, which goes into how the streets within the city are aligned. So now we're at the cross street of Kansas and 18th Street, approaching the 2000 block 
of 18th Street. So you can see there, the numbers are getting smaller as we're going in the opposite direction of where the arrow is pointing. In our case, we're going eastbound. However, before we continue going eastbound on 18th Street, uh, let me identify USPS mail drop box that you might find convenient if you need any postal delivery of any other items, such as maybe a, a gift card or a souvenir. Anyway, it's, at, it's located around the corner here of 18th and Kansas Street at the official address 2104 18th Street. Now here is an absolutely phenomenal view of the San Francisco downtown skyline here at the corner of Kansas and 18th Street. So again, whenever you get to the intersection, look to your left, look to your right, and you're going to be able to absorb, in many cases, um, some spectacular scenery within the city. Now as we proceed going eastbound on 18th Street, uh, notice the depth of the hill as we, it takes a dip going downwards and then it's going to go back upwards. So this is what you're going to see all throughout the city, which is really amazing. Those of you into architecture, you're really going to love the design of how the streets are aligned. Now here's yet another community garden within Petrero Hill that's located at the corner of Rhode Island and 18th Streets. Now this one doesn't have an official name, at least I couldn't see one up on the, uh, at the entrance of the garden, but let's take a look at it. So you can see there's a nice seating area. In fact, there's a couple of seating areas uh, right within a wine barrel where you can relax and absorb uh, the views of the garden. So as you can see, it's a very small garden. It doesn't have as many plants as other gardens within the neighborhood, but uh, nevertheless, it does have some nice plants. More uh, nice shots of the garden. Now here's a convenient walk path that takes you through more of the plants that are within the garden. It allows you to see more plants within the garden. Well, there is some signage um, on some of the poles here within the garden that indicates some more information about the garden that you can read and learn more about. Another nice view of the plants within the garden. Now here's more information about the garden and it indicates that the San Francisco the garden is brought to you by the San Francisco Pre Prima Culture Guild and they're located at primaculture slash sf dot org. Now we're approaching the 1900 block of 18th Street. The cross street is Rhode Island. Now as we continue going eastbound on 18th Street, as you can see here, uh, this particular street, the 1900 block of 18th Street, is very steep. However, it's not the steepest hill in the city. We have two steep hills that are both the same grade, 31, I think, point one, 31.5. One of them is in Noy Valley, and the other is in Russian Hill. And the one that's in Russian Hills is adjacent to the Lumbar Crooked Street. We're going to feature those two steep hills at a later time. But nevertheless, you need to familiarize yourself with these steep hills and know how to walk up them and down them. Now, in this case, we're going to be walking down. So it's not difficult, but you do need to be aware of the steepness of the hill and how to best uh, walk down it. Now, one of the things that's special about uh, the transportation within the city is, as you just witnessed there, the uh, the Muni bus line that will allow you pretty much to get you through most of the uh, the main points of interest within the city. In my case, I uh, took the 19 Polk bus line, which that was the 19 Bolt going going inbound. Uh, from the Civic Center BART station. So those of you that are, let's say, are staying at a hotel that's in the downtown area, you can either take public transit down Market Street to the Civic Center BART station and then take the transfer to the 19 Polk Street at 8th 
and Market Street, right up to right here, De Haro and 18th Street. Uh, as it, it approaches and comes up De Haro Street going north and southbound. But nevertheless, the best approach when you need any form of transportation within the city is to contact SF Muni. Uh, it's a great information line for all for accessing all public transit information. Now their number is area code 415-673-6864. They can also give you time estimates as well as when the next bus will arrive or, or and or transportation, public transportation will arrive. Now the other thing you need to be aware of if you're using any form of public transportation is where to find the pickup location stop. Now as you can see here, this particular stop it is identified with a yellow marking that's um, written in black ink that shows bus stop 19. Now in many cases, or in most cases, the uh, traditional bus stop in the city will have like a canopy. will have a seating area and there will be a canopy over top of it and it'll also have some signage indicating the public transit uh, systems, either buses or light rail, that's going to stop there. But in a lot of cases, like here, at the corner of De Haro and 18th Street, there will be no seating area and there will be no canopy uh, covering over the seating area. It's just going to be a yellow marking at the, one of the poles at the corner indicating the bus stop. So this is what you need to know. You need to be able to identify your specific location point, pick up a stop. Uh, and again, you can find that out by contacting SF Muni as well. Uh, but this is what you want to look for when trying to identify the specific location pick up stop. Now, as we indicated earlier, one of the, you need to be aware if you're walking up and down these hills, the significance of the steepness of the hill, but also you need to be aware if you're driving up and down these hills, you need to be aware, especially if you're using a commercial vehicle, of the significance of whether or not you can get up a steep hill. I had the misfortune of being a commercial driver for a day where I was attempting to drop off some uh, children from an event and I didn't realize the steepness of the hills and how it impacts commercial vehicles. And I almost didn't make it up the hill. In fact, I thought the vehicle would just turn around and go back down, but I didn't realize the significance of driving up steep hills. And you'll probably see some signage throughout the city indicating that uh, large commercial vehicles are not advised to drive up the hill. Certainly you can drive down the hill, no problem, but it's your awareness of the steepness of the hills when, when making an attempt to drive up the hill. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the importance of, of uh, identifying and reading the signage if you decide to park, street park within the city. Now, this is another example of what you need to be aware of uh, when parking in a specific area where there is a white zone. Now, the white zone is for loading and unloading of passengers. No parking is allowed in the white zone. And so here's a sign that indicates the rules and requirements in regards to using this white zone. As you can see there, it says passenger loading only from 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. and then 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. during school days. And you see there also it says a five minute limit. So uh, you need to be aware of this as there are white zones all throughout the city, especially if you're staying at a hotel. You cannot park in a white zone. Uh, you can also only for the drop off and pick up of passengers. So let me show you on the curb side, it'll indicate the markings for the various types of parking zones. In this case, let me show you what the white zone looks like. So essentially this white zone is used for really much the entire block. Now, let me give you an up close look at the, the message that's on the white zone that indicates what's going to happen if you decide to park here for longer than five minutes. So the first message is passenger loading. So let me show you the next message. Tow away. So what that means is if your car is parked in this white zone or any white zone, 
longer than five minutes it's going to get told so you can see the third message on the white zone is no parking so this is what you need to be aware of when you come upon a white zone if you say you're checking into a hotel or you're going to a commercial establishment you want to pay attention to the signage on the street and then you want to look at the zoning which is at the curbside and that will help you determine whether or not you can park there and for how long. Okay so now we're approaching the 1700 block on 18th Street and the cross street is Carolina. So one of the things special about this view at the intersection of Carolina and 18th Street uh, looking northbound the city skyline is that we're at the kind of the bottom of the dip of the hill. As we indicated earlier, we're going to be going downhill and now, and then we're going to go uphill. Well, now we're kind of in between the downhill versus the uphill. And you notice that now it's kind of like you're looking, the, you're looking at the San Francisco uh, city skyline uh, on a flat surface level. So the depth perception of the view is slightly different as opposed to looking at the skyline from the hills. Now we're looking at the skyline uh, at the bottom of the hill, which is quite interesting in itself. So I said the views are going to be somewhat different from intersection to intersection. Well, if you decide to live here in, in Petrel Hill, you can check out Coldware Banker, Global Luxury. They deal with residential brokerage. Uh, the phone number is 415-474-1750. Uh, looks like Leslie Bauer is the main contact. Her number is 415-205-3899. You can also visit PetrelHillRetreat.com. Okay, so now that we're at the bottom of the hill, now we're going to be proceeding up the hill. And now we're approaching the 1500 block of 18th Street. The cross street is Kansas. Now, from this point forward, going eastbound on 18th Street, we're going to identify some of your dining options. So it's not a whole lot in this particular area, but there is enough to make your experience here in Petrel Hill memorable. Now, one of the things you need to be aware of is throughout, all throughout the city, not only just Petrel Hill, is street closures or lane closures. These happen periodically. Uh, for a lot of different reasons. You know, maybe it's an accident or uh, maybe it's construction going on in the area, whatever it might be. Occasionally you run into situations where lanes or streets or specific blocks are closed. So you need to be aware of this also when you're driving to a specific location point uh, of the numerous amount of street closures and lane closures throughout the city. Now, Chats Roasted Company offers a wide variety of roasted coffee. Now, they're located at 301 Arkansas, which is right at the corner here of 18th Street. Chats Roasted Company also features uh, Mitchell's Ice Cream. Now, that's a popular ice cream uh, maker here within the city that distributes a lot of their ice cream through various, uh, like, cafe stores, and small boutique um, eateries. Well, those of you that are looking for a nail salon, you can check out Dosi Salon. And she does hair, waxing, and nails. Located at 1523 18th Street. Well, Goat Hill Pizza is known for its sourdough crusted pies. Now they're located at the 300 block of Connecticut, right at the corner here of 18th Street. So now we're approaching the 1400 block of 18th Street at Connecticut, but before we continue going eastbound on 18th, there's a few uh, more dining options I want to emphasize for your enjoyment. Now Sunflower, Vietnamese restaurant is known for its Vietnamese crepes and Southeast East Asia cuisine. 
They're located at 288 Connecticut, right here on the corner of 18th Street. So Mochica is a Peruvian kitchen cuisine, known for the mixed variety of tapas and ceviche. They also do brunch and lunch specials. They have an outdoor patio, it is right alongside the sidewalk here. And they do bottomless uh, mimosas and sangria. Now they're located at 1469 18th Street at the corner of Connecticut. More views of the Machica restaurant, sidewalk, dining option. Now Ruby Wines, if you can't see behind the fence there, there's a wine shop and they feature natural and organic wines from various regions, wine regions. Ruby Wine is located at 1419 18th Street. Now here's yet another convenient USPS mail drop box. So again, as I mentioned earlier, if you have any needs for mailing off any souvenirs or any products you might have purchased here in Patrol Hill, here's a neat convenient USPS mailbox drop located at right in the corner of 18th Street in Missouri. The official address would be 1400 18th Street. Now Ches Maman restaurant offers uh, French flair styled mussels and burgers and they're located at 1401 18th Street corner of 18th and Missouri. They also offer outdoor dining as well. Now Parker Cafe offers breakfast, lunch, and dinner. They feature small bites, smoothies, and also uh, outdoor dining where you can observe spectacular views of the San Francisco skyline. Let me show you. They're located at 1399 uh, 14th Street. So this is what you would see if you're sitting at Parker Cafe uh, with outdoor dining on the sidewalk, as well as Chase Maman, which is right across the street. Spectacular views of the downtown skyline, which again is right on the corner here of Missouri and 18th Street. Now Hazel's Kitchen offers, offers sandwiches, soups, salads, and more, and they're located at 1319 18th Street. They also have outdoor uh, seating as well, outdoor dining as well. Now, Plow is a new American cuisine that has a rustic dining room with uh, oak barrel tables. Now, they're located at 1299 18th Street, right on the corner of Texas. Okay, now here's another sign that you really need to pay attention to because it's a huge problem within the city. It says here, beware, do not tempt thieves. Do not leave valuables in view. Lock your car. You have a huge vandalism problem within the city. Anywhere between five, 600 cars a day get vandalized. So it's very important, especially in tourist-related areas, that if you do decide to park in a tourist-related area, that you lock your car and don't leave valuables in the car. And the thing is, a lot of them is pretty clever, so they'll actually watch you put valuables in the car or take it out. So I'd recommend that you take out your valuables before you get to your destination point. So that way, if they are watching, they won't see you take out or put in any valuables in your car. But nevertheless, uh, you want to make absolutely certain that anywhere you park in the city, that you do not leave valuables in plain sight. Okay, now we're at the 1200 block of 18th Street. We're approaching 1200 block of 18th Street. The cross street is Texas. Okay, now here's the, the bus stop, as I mentioned earlier, that has the canopy and seating options where you can wait for your designated bus. In this case, it'll be the 22 bus line. So in this case, the bus stop is more obvious. But as I mentioned previously, the bus stop is going to be located by use of a yellow marker, which is on a pole. 
which is a little bit harder to find. But nevertheless, this shows you the two types of bus stops that you will find uh, throughout the city. And here's even a better up close look of the bus stop. But you can see those are two seating options right there. Now this bus stop is located at 1246 18th Street, right on the corner of 18th and Texas. Okay, now we're approaching the 1100 block of 18th Street. The cross street is Mississippi. Now, Gannon's is a Middle Eastern restaurant that serves kebabs, burgers, fish and chips, beer, wine, and more. And they're located at 1135 18th Street, right here on the corner of Mississippi. They also offer outdoor dining. Okay, now, here's a, a not yet another convenient USPS mail drop box, but it's also adjacent to a waste disposal. This is designed to keep the city clean, so if you, are, if you have any waste, don't hesitate to drop it off at the waste disposals. That's located at 1166 18th Street, right here in the corner of, of Mississippi. Okay, now we're approaching the uh, okay now we're approaching the thousand block of 18th, 18th street and the cross street is pennsylvania now this intersection is really going to give you some amazing views of the uh, city skyline but also it's going to emphasize another little tree i want to point out so at the intersection of pennsylvania and 18th street if you see uh, to your north, a spectacular view of the city skyline. Now that tall, thin building there is the Salesforce Tower. I featured the Salesforce Tower in my film shoot on Sonoma, on South of Market, on Mission Street. So I'll leave, put a link in the description for that as an up-close view of what um, not only the Salesforce Tower looks like, but also many of the other buildings that are on that Mission Street. And of course, to your left there, that tall brown building is gonna be the Bank of America building. But also, you see there's another highway here we're gonna cross in a minute. And this is Highway 280, and I mentioned 280 earlier in conjunction to 101, that this is the highway that you wanna use coming in and out of the city. So we're gonna take a closer look at it in a few minutes. Now here's a nice directional sign that's gonna direct you to Highway 280. We're getting ready to cross the 18th Street Bridge in a minute, going over 280. So now we're approaching the 18th Street Bridge. Now I mentioned earlier about the numerous bridges that are within the city and how they connect you either to uh, another block within the city or they connect you over, the, over a highway. In this case, it's gonna be approaching uh, Highway 280. So here's one of the bus lines that you'd be taking if you decide to uh, use the public transit system. And that, that bus will just pass us the 22 bus line. Okay, now, here's an up-close look of Highway 280. Now, to your right, the cars are going southbound from the city. And to your left, the cars are coming inbound uh, into the city. Now, as I mentioned earlier, if you're coming out of the city, going to, let's say, the San Francisco airport, you definitely want to utilize Highway 280. As you can see, is no, not nowhere nearly the amount of traffic on 280 as there was on Highway 101, especially during the rush hour, which is between 3.30 and 7 p.m. Uh, so, this is a big edge and saved me a great deal of time. Same with coming from the San Francisco airport, coming into the city. Uh, you want to be taking Highway 280 as opposed to Highway 101. Now, just at a distance there, you'll see another bridge there. That's the 20th Street Bridge. I featured that bridge on my Phase 1 film shoot as I was going eastbound from the Crooked Street at 20th and Vermont. And one more thing, this view is uh, looking southbound as you're heading towards the San Francisco airport, for example. 
Now, just across the street on the bridge, this, this is view is showing you northbound uh, of the San Francisco skyline. As you can see there, the cars to the right are going inbound for downtown. And the cars to your left are going outbound. So now here's an entrance. Now here's an entrance to Highway 280 North. Uh, if you decide to drive again into the Petrero Hill area and you want to head back to downtown, this is one of the entrances that you would use. There's an exit just a few feet going uh, westbound from 18th Street where the exit is coming into uh, 18th Street. But this would be the exit that you or entry to the highway 280 going northbound. Now this entrance is going to be essentially between we mentioned earlier Mississippi and uh, I think the next block coming up is Minnesota. You can't see it from here but another view of the entrance of Highway 280 going northbound off of 18th Street. Okay, now we're at the corner of Minnesota and 18th Street. Now this particular sec area within Petrel Hill is a sub area called Dog Patch. And you'll find many of these sub neighborhoods and science inside some of the main neighborhoods all throughout the city. I mentioned this briefly in phase one and that this dog patch area constitutes the square footage blocks of Highway 280, from which we just came, uh, west, and then south would be Cesar Chavez, and then east would be uh, Illinois and or 3rd Street, which we're, we're approaching here in a few minutes, and then north would be 16th Street. So those four, four blocks would represent the dog patch area within Petrero Hill. Several of the neighborhoods also have these sub-neighborhoods as well within the city, which we will feature at a later time. For example, South of Market District also has South Beach and a few other small miniature sub-neighborhoods. But nevertheless, let's continue going eastbound on, on 18th Street. We'll be approaching the 700 block. Now here's signage representing the entrance to the Dog Patch Historic District neighborhood. Now approaching the 600 block of 18th Street, the cross street is Tennessee. Now approaching the 500 block of 18th Street. Now the cross street is 3rd Street. Now 3rd Street is going to be a significant street that you'd want to pay attention to in terms of more dining and shopping options within the dog patch area. We'll feature some of it. Uh, this depends on where you're at on 3rd Street. Now, Mushi, Mushi is a Japanese restaurant featuring sushi and soba. And they're located at 2092 3rd Street. Cross Street is 18th Street. They also offer outdoor dining. Now, here's another view of 3rd Street as it crosses 18th Street. This is going northbound as you're heading into downtown. And 3rd Street is kind of a big uh, street for public transit as well. We have the main uh, T line that's a light rail that's currently out of order right now. So they're using the, the, bus, the T bus line to take you up and down 3rd Street. Also, you continue at 3rd Street going northbound, you'll find the AT&T Park, or excuse me, Oracle Park, where the Giants play. And not too far up north is also where the Warriors play at the new Chase Center. We're now approaching the 500 block of 18th Street. Uh, the cross street, as I said earlier, is 3rd Street. Okay, now we're at the corner of 18th Street and Illinois, the 500 block. Now this is pretty much the uh, end of 18th Street, although uh, as you can see there, where there should be the 400, 300, 200, and 100 block, but as I'll show you here in a minute, um, you won't be able to find those blocks as 
um, the next block going eastbound is, is going to be a park, the Crane Cove Park, that I featured in phase, phase one of Petrero Hill. I'll show you in a minute. So as you can see here, this is pretty much the end of 18th Street within Petrero Hill. It may continue on uh, furthermore, but as you can see here, the 18th Street is blocked by Crane Cove Park. I featured Crane Cove Park in phase one as I was coming down 20th Street eastbound. And so uh, I'll show you a few shots of this very nice park, by the way, before we conclude in phase, before we conclude phase three. Now, Crane Cove Park is, the entrance to it, as I said earlier, is at the corner of Illinois and, and 18th Street. Uh, it's a very nice park that's um, kind of the entrance to a replicant of the shipbuilding facilities that were here in the early 1900s. So I'll give you some more individual shots of the park. As you can see, the park has some grass seating areas for you to relax, you can have lunch or a picnic. And they've got great views of the East Bay, the Port of Oakland. I'll give you some more close-up shots of the water. So you can see Crane Cove Park is a great place to take your family, friends, or significant others. Great networking opportunity. You can wade in the water, have lunch, relax, enjoy spectacular views of the East Bay as you see within this panoramic view. So here's an up close view of the park, of the beach area within the park. As you can see, you can also do a little bit of kayaking there. There's some Halloween costume characters. They're doing some swimming, some uh, kayaking in the park. See if we can get a wave. <laughs> but in the background, you'll see uh, the Port of Oakland, those white cranes in the back. See, they're all lined up there. That's the uh, Port of Oakland where a lot of the container ships come in from all over the world. They used to come into San Francisco, but now they come over through the Golden, underneath the Golden Gate Bridge over to Oakland. More views of the beach. Yet more views of the park. Now I'm not 100% certain, but I believe this area was the area that was used for not only just shipbuilding, but also for ships that were coming in to the bay. You'll see some of the old cranes here that are uh, within this area that they use for transporting uh, commercial um, shipping products. And you can see also the park is good for the rollerblading, rollerblading, uh, skating, dog walking, and many other recreational activities. So those are some of the old cranes that again may have been used for uh, receiving uh, container ships that came in from the bay. I could be wrong but uh, as you can see they look very similar to the ones over in East over in East Bay over in Oakland look to your left here. Okay here I just found some information posts that talk more about the area and then it was uh, educated before it was a famous ships building area and it talks about some of these ships that were actually made in the early 1800s. I thought it was the 1900s. Well, some were more than the 1900s and some were the 1800s. As you can see here there was the USS Olympia, the El Primio, the USS Oregon, USS Herman, USS England. So here's more information on the information posts which are mounted on the uh, fences. It talks about the shipyard labor and the culture. 
So this is something you want to be aware of. You could probably get some of this information online as well. Uh, but it is kind of informative to learn about how this shipyard was used. Uh, yet even more information about the shipyard and the people that worked in the area. Now this area of the park is much, has much more seating areas for more networking, more relaxing. And it's got a grass area here I'll show you in a minute. So here's the grass area where, again, you can sit back, relax, unwind, walk your dog or pet, and observe more views of the shipyard. So here's a fire pit. In fact, there's two of them here. So if you want to do any barbecuing uh, with your significant other, other family members or friends, this would be a good opportunity to do that. And they have a few bench areas as well, so you can have a big picnic area. More seating areas adjacent to the barbecue pits, or fire pits. Now here's a, a big sign in identifying the title of the park, which as I said earlier is Crane Cove Park. Now this concludes phase three of our journey within Petrero Hill. If you liked what you learned and saw, appreciate if you uh, subscribe, like, comment, and share my channel, your family, friends, significant others, business colleagues. And uh, we also provide links in the description for many of the, the phases one and two of Petrero Hill, along with many of the other adventures throughout the San Francisco Bay Area. Uh, including Marin County, Wine Country, the Scenic Drive to Highway 1, and much more. And don't forget to tune into Phase 4. We're going to continue our journey of the spectacular points of interest within Petrero Hill. That's all for now, and have a nice day.